Jesus. Hi guys, I am back. I haven't been here for a while. I just, I was gonna make up a reason as to why. We just took a little break from the ZZ Mill show and now we are back and I have a lovely guest with me today. You are the first sportsman that I've had on my show, Lawrence Akoli. Did I say your last name right? You did, you did. Really? Yes. I'm so proud of myself. Where are you from, Nigeria? I'm from Nigeria, yeah. Okay, what, what um, tribe? I'm half Yoruba, half Ibo. Oh, so that's... I'm mixed as a bow. Oh. Is there a side that you sway towards most? Um, you seem a little bit nervous. I would relax if I, I was you. I don't, I don't feel nervous. Do so you not? No, I don't. You seem a bit nervous. Okay, I don't know if you're trying to make me feel nervous or that, but I feel all right, do you know what I'm saying? Okay. But in all seriousness, <laughs> though, I'm half Yoruba, half Ibo. My mum's Yoruba, so I lean a bit more towards that one. You get along well with your mum? Extremely well. Your mummy's boy? I wouldn't say I'm a mummy's boy, per se, but um, I look after her. Are you the type of person that when you're in a relationship, your mum always believes that you're right over the girl? Oh, I don't really go to my mum with relationship problems, you know what I'm saying? So she's, she never really has an opinion. Have you had a lot of relationship problems? No, not in my, not in my time. Really? Yeah. Okay. So what's your love life like at the moment? It's, COVID. Was, Actually, how's COVID treating you? It's, well, my beard's grown during that time. I so know, that's really, 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 really one of the main parts. Obviously, it's a sad time for the world. But for me personally, it's been good. My beard's grown. I've moved house. So it's, it's been all right. I've managed to be proactive in that time. How's it been for you? It's been all right. It's been okay. Have you done anything interesting? Do you know what? Um, not really, no. Just, just making sure that my mental health is in check, you know. What about the loving during COVID? Any sex? Because I know you're not supposed to have sex during COVID, but was you getting any? Why? Who said that? No one said anything. I'm just, this is what I've been asking everyone that's come oh, on my show you said it, like, during you COVID. Knew you're not supposed to. No, like, it's been all right. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you have? Have I had sex during COVID? Yeah. Um, and as in so far this year, yes, I have had sex. How's it? Great? Nice? Um, yes. I mean, on my I, end, I listened, I've enjoyed... I've listened to um, some previews of your song, and you mentioned about having threesomes and all that, two girls, something about two girls. I don't think that, that comes up in the preview of my song. <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, nah. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure. I mean, no, you did. Two on, bitches, I've heard it. Nah, it's on Instagram for people to see. Do you get a cover for what's I'm there? pretty sure I heard that. One You're of, wrong. You You're posted wrong. it in your, in your story. Must, nah, I mean, do I talk about stuff like that? Maybe. But in what the preview that's out there, absolutely not. So, yeah, what is this about, this, this um, music stuff that you're doing at the moment? Because if p the people that don't, I'm pretty sure people know what you do. You're a professional boxer. I mean, sorry, I just wanted to, bro, it's a bit weird that at the start of the interview, you didn't like, go into like, who you're interviewing, you just expect everyone to know who I was. Have but you watched my show before? I have watched several of your shows. Exactly, then you would know I'm very unconventional. Okay, cool. Are, we, are you going to get into it now? That's what I was about to do okay, before you cut me off. Do you know it. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, we have Lawrence Akoli. He is a European boxing champion. Boxing champion. Fourteen fights. Fourteen. Fourteen yeah. wins. Eleven knockouts. Wow. Okay. Yes, okay. Now right. you're getting right. right. Okay. You're getting from. So when was your last fight? My last fight was in October last year. How is it for you um, knowing that at the moment there's actually like no date put on when people can go to sporting events. I know they had like, they've done this, uh, Eddie Hearn done the whole, oh, that's your camp, right? Yeah, they done the whole virtual thing and you watched it on TV. How did, what do you think about that? I think it's amazing that during a period as difficult as this, that, you know, they found ways to um, allow people to make money through boxing. I feel like a lot of people have taken financial hits, whether it's rap, whether it's boxing, whether whatever, because there's no crowds and crowd interactions, but he still found a way for everyone to make money. Um, and for me, I don't really, like, my stuff's already contracted, so, like, I don't really need a crowd in terms of money, but mm -hmm. it's good for the, you know, occasion and stuff like that, but I personally feel like I perform with crowds, with no crowds, so I feel good. So do you have a date set for your next fight? I have a date. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it, but it's in December. Do you okay, know what and I mean? you're, not, you're not sure yet if it's going to have... Oh, well, I doubt it, since what the government crowd? has basically tried to put us on lockdown again. I do think that they did say that it won't affect sporting events and stuff like that, so we'll see. But um, ultimately, do you know what I mean? There's the date's there, and God willing, you know, we're able to get it done. So are you training right now, or you just been in Dubai shooting music videos? Uh, a bit of both. Do you know what I mean, even while I was in Dubai, I was also um, training, do you know what I mean? But I train all year round. I've got a gym in my house, do you know what I'm saying? I swear. So, yeah. Okay. Do, yeah. But you've moved in there recently? Yeah, during COVID, do you know what I mean? So it's, 
it's got a gym in it, so I'm able to run, hit the bags, whatever else. COVID, so. it's for you, it seems like COVID was like, okay. Do you know what it is? Obviously, fortunately, I was able to do certain stuff before COVID that, that allowed me to go through this year, do you know what I mean, comfortably and, you know, all right. So you are cruiserweight? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not like a boxing fa like fanatic fan. I watch it for the entertainment purposes. I don't. I'm not like a solid knowing knowledge of it. So explain to me what is cruiserweight for people that don't know. It's just the weight category. So when you fight in boxing, it depends on how much you weigh, like not how tall you are or anything like that. It's just you weigh this much on the day, and then you fight people at that same weight. So for me, that's 200 pounds. Um, I don't know what other people use. 200 pounds. You have to weigh that, and then you fight other people that weigh that same amount. So do you ever get scared? Of what? When you go into the ring? Um, not, I don't necessarily get scared of someone. It's more so the thought of losing, do you know what I mean? But that more affects me in training, so it allows me to diet, to get up and run and stuff like that. But when it comes to the fight day, like I'm very cool. Um, I always just go in. Obviously, you put a lot of um, stuff at stake, you know, mm. pride on the line and stuff, but I feel quite comfortable in the fact that no matter what, so you're more scared of losing than anything? Yeah, like obviously any sort of loss, like obviously I've seen social media, you see what happens to boxers if they get beaten, do you know what I mean? And beaten badly. Um, so that's the, kind of, that's the kind of stuff that plays at the back of your head. But ultimately, you know, you have to gas yourself up. You have to tell yourself, it's not gonna happen to you. You're gonna do it to the other person. So that's kind of what I do. I just get myself into a zone. Do you, I feel like you're not really a part of the urban world. What I think that? you, as in like, I feel like as a boxer, the urban world is, is not really like, they don't really talk about you, if, I, if you get what I mean. I feel, like, I feel like boxing fans, obviously you have a solid boxing fan base, but I would say like urban world, how other boxers maybe get spoken about, like Anthony Yardi, Anthony Joshua, obviously Anthony Joshua because he's Anthony Joshua, but like you, I would say people, like when you end up in the blog sites, it's not to do with your boxing, it's to do with everything but your boxing. Mm -hmm. So like recently you was in the blog sites because you've decided that you want to do music. Wait, or... am I allowed to talk about the, the oh, boxing okay. or yeah, not? Go, yeah. go ahead, right. go, so, go. And <laughs> with that, I would say that my fan base is predominantly like, boxing fans who would be mm -hmm. people that watch football, sports fans, or like guys that go to the pub, mainly like white guys, do you know where I'm coming from? So that's the main fan base. They're the ones that help me pay bills because they pay to watch my fights and stuff like that. So I think it's important to shout out to them, do you know where I'm coming from? But in terms of the urban, I mean, I don't think it's, I don't think, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a bad thing, but I feel like you like to be a part of the, this, okay, what I'll say is the scene. There's like a scene that is around like UK artists, that type of vibe. And you seem to like to be a part of that type of thing. Do you know what it is? I'm a massive supporter. If you're talking about music and stuff like that, massive supporter of UK music, full stop. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I've got rapper friends, etc. I've got people that I interact rapper with. Rapper ex-girlfriends. etc. So yeah. you can see that I've got a sort of connection with music. I like music. I listen to it every day when I'm running, when I'm doing whatever. So I always have had like an attraction and a liking to it, do you get coming from? And ultimately I feel like I'm quite known just in general through boxing, do you know what I mean? Do you, um, is that why you decided to do music? Because you have a, you enjoy it, listening to it, so you decided to take your hand at trying to do it? Yeah, I think that as well as the fact, obviously I've done little things when I was younger, but because of boxing, I've never really had the avenue to kind of go with it because it's everyday training, everyday this, that and other. And you don't kind of want to take your eye off the ball, but with something like a lockdown, mm. you've got a bit more free time, um, helps up the studio in my house, stuff like that, so I can just enjoy it. And then the thing with me making music is that I went to do it as just a bit of fun, if that makes sense, on mm. one of my days off. And then the stuff that was coming out, the producer at the time was like, yo, this is cold, that. Your voice sounds sick. And, but with me, I just believe everyone has to say that, okay, I'm the champ or whatever. You've got to kind of just gas up so I come to another session. But when I send it to, I don't need to say people's names, but established artists, that like, oh, I made this, what do you think? And everyone that listens to it, it's the same thing. Oh, you're making music, bro. Like, you're a boxer, kind of. You then they listen to it and then it's instantly like, yo, bro, I was 
surprised you're talking some real shit there, like, do you know what I mean? So, so what, what's, your, what's your what's what's your your lyrical content? It depends, do you know what I mean? It varies, depending from track to track. I've, I've made more than one song, do you know what I mean? Oh, you have? You bring I down have, an EP or something? Maybe, Mixed depends. Tape. It depends how I feel when I wake up any particular day, do you know what I mean? I might drop an EP tomorrow, and I might might not, do you know what I mean? But yeah. um, the content, is, it varies, do you know what I mean? But I think, for me, obviously, all, all this money and stuff that I've got is legit, do you get coming from? So I feel like, it's quite important, like, because I don't get sister, I come from Hackney, etc. So I've integrated. I know. Me what. too. Stoke Newton. Uh, Do you know really, about Best I, mean, I, I grew up in Stoke Newton, I never saw or heard of Hackney. <laughs> you know yeah. But that's okay. That's because I went to school out of ends. What kind of school did you go to? I went to a private school. Okay. So basically, I didn't hang around in Hackney, but I grew up in Stoke Newton. Yeah, so I don't know if you know about drug culture and stuff like that. Of do you course know? I do. Okay, cool. So obviously, I feel like that comes across a lot in music. And obviously, you've got to respect the hustle or whatever. But I feel like there's not really many people that talk about lifestyle because I can do that flexing, did it, whatever stuff, but it doesn't get portrayed by rapper and by boxers or, you know, a businessman or someone that's making good money legit. It's usually reformed people that, you know, they're changing their life. Maybe they're still on the road, whatever. So I feel like it's a good opportunity to get a good flex for all my athlete friends, all my businessman friends, and everyone in general, because at least you know when I'm rapping, it's everything I'm saying is real. But then some people might say, still, like, your your job allows you to flex 100%. more than an average person. Yeah, 100%. So a, a, a person that works in the bank or um, that has a nine to five, majority of them are probably not going to have a nice AP on their it wrist depends. and stuff like that. Well, I'm saying there will be some, mm -hmm. but still, it is, I get what you're saying, and I think it's good. I think there does need to be more positive music because I'm always talking about that. I'm always saying that, you know, certain lifestyles are uh, endorsed and it's a thing. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's a good thing. So, what are you going to do? Just release the music and then see what happens? You're going to try and get it on radio? What? I mean, I put stuff out and obviously I've already got a lot of like, people in, interested in the music. Right. So, obviously, it's a whole different field, but people are talking about distribution, this and... That so I, I'm just going with it, seeing what it is. I'll probably just drop a couple of videos. I've already shot videos. Like, oh, you have? I have, you yeah. Went, oh, yeah, because you went to you Dubai. I went to do So I think with me, I'm quite an a impulsive person at times. So I was here, went to the studio on like a Wednesday or Thursday, sent a couple bits out. People said, hey, this is really good. I like it. And I got gassed and thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to Dubai to shoot this. So that's oh, kind of what that happened. who that girl was, right? What the, girl? The girl that you ended up on Shade Borough with. Shade Borough? Shade Borough. Don't act like you don't know what Shade Borough is, Lawrence. Wait, hold on. No, I, I definitely do. But was that on Shade Borough? I don't follow them, so I don't know. I mean... You was on Shade Borough. Saying what? And there was a girl that you was in Dubai with. Is that the girl that was in your video? Because when I saw yes. you post... Um... Uh, I mean, I was in Dubai with a couple of girls, do you know what I'm saying? Um, oh, and, swear. And the, and the team, do you know what I mean? Um, so, and yeah. the team. Yeah, so we, we, got, we got our shit done. And when's the video coming out? Oh, it depends. Like, I, I kind of wanted to drop it already, but I've been told to just wait on some bots and stuff, do you know what I mean? And then I'll drop You feel it. like you're going through a crisis? A crisis? Like an identity crisis. I'm very, very well aware of who I am, do you know what I mean? Not that I don't think you can do boxing and rapping, but to some people and it could seem like it's a bit all over the place, do you get what I mean? Like there's no, you've got a fight coming up, maybe you should concentrate on the fighting, not really doing music, videos and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think personally, as anyone, you can't be put in a box. You have to be allowed to do what you want. So before I started boxing, people told me stick to university, stick to whatever. But I decided I'm gonna push in boxing. So same with rap or anything else I'm doing. Like I've got a book coming out. You can't tell me don't focus on the book because you've got a fight coming up. Well, open up a McDonald's and just little stuff like that that is getting done. You've got to be able to. As long as we understand boxing mm. is not just my job, it's my life. It's like I live and breathe it. Do you know what I mean? So that's always got president. So before I go to studio. I've done two or three training sessions already. Do you know what I mean? Before I go to Dubai, I've planned my schedule of where I'm going to train. Do you know what I'm saying? So I always get the work done. And, um, for, and in terms of identity crisis, now like, I am whoever I want to be. Do you get where I'm coming from? Obviously, being on the same, underneath the same management and team as AJ that you're always compared to Anthony Joshua. No. Do you feel like you're always in his shadow? I don't think that uh, I'm compared to him, really. We're just two boxers, obviously, he's someone that I have massive respect for, like, do you know what I mean? And I feel like every boxer in the UK understands that when AJ came, won the Olympics, etc., 
it made the sport so much bigger. So the money that I get, I have to be thankful that we get paid more because people like AJ have come along and he's still going now, but he's made the purses more, etc. So I got a lot of time and respect for him. He's someone that, as I said, the reason why I went with him in terms of management, he promised me I'll get X, Y, Z thing. This deal, that deal, that deal. If I do this, this, that, and other, mm-hmm. and it's all come to fruition. So I never kind of compare myself to him, so I can never see myself in a shadow and we've got our own different paths, even though it's both boxing. Do you ever see yourself going to heavyweight? Yes. When? In the next how many years? It depends how boxing goes, but probably in the next couple of years. Interesting. Mm. So the girls. Talk to me about the girls and what's happening with the girls. So obviously you had a very public relationship with Miss Banks that you're not with anymore. Me personally, I thought it was a very lovely match. Number one, because as I often know, I often speak about this, I don't see sportsmen, especially blacks, obviously black sportsmen, handsome like yourself, tall, you know, aesthetically, you know, pleasing. Um, You don't normally see them with darker skinned women. So when I saw you and Miss Banks together, that really made me happy, I liked that. And then I was, you know, you brought, she done you, she walked you out to the ring. So I talk, spoke about it a couple of times on my show. I really liked it. What happened? Nothing. I just feel like same with any two people that are together and they're not together anymore. It didn't work out for whatever reason. But in terms of that situation, me and I are good. Like, I support her. I think she's got a new song called Nubble Cup Out. Make sure you go buy and stream that. And in terms of me, like, I'm just doing my thing. She's doing her thing. Was you heartbroken from that breakup? Um, I feel like, yeah, I mean, anyone in a relationship knows you go through certain stuff, do you know what I mean? Would you ever get it, go into a public relationship again? I think, personally, obviously, it comes with its own stresses, do you know what I mean? So I'm not 100% sure it needs to be kind of out there, do you know what I mean? I'm not against it, because I just post whatever's going on in my life. So if I'm having a fight, I post it. If I've got a girl, I post it, if whatever. But I think I'll be a little bit more tacti- tactical with it, do you know what I mean, going forward. Because it seemed like he was, like, real in deep love with her. Like, it, this was like, this is what you thought was gonna... And as be. I said, I don't want to talk about it for too, too long. I mean, it's not too, too long. We've literally had about three questions about Miss Banks, about your relationship with her. Yeah. But I think it's, I think, I don't understand when people break up with people. It's like you said, it's a natural thing where everyone gets so uptight about, about speaking about it. Do you know what it is Like you said, it's a natural process. Yeah, exactly, and I don't feel uptight. Do you know what it is? I feel you like You seem like you're getting a little bit uptight. And I'll explain. So as I said, with that situation, mm-hmm. Real, real feelings, etc. Yeah. So I feel like it kind of deserves the privacy that any relationship deserves. Like what was put out, it's beautiful that you can say, you know, it showed what black love can look like and I'm happy to have been part of something like that. Mm. But that situation's over now. So it's about, you know, future stuff. When you did break up, there was like this cryptic message that she kind of put out and said about dealing with narcissistic people. Um, obviously we can't say that was about you, but the right, timing um, was quite fitting at the time. Would you say that you you demonstrate characteristics of narcissism? Me personally, I'll be honest with you, I spoke about this on my show when it mm-hmm. happened, and I said I feel like most boxers have to have a level of narcissism. Like, you have to, because you have to think you're the shit, you have to, and at the end of the day, you have had 14 fights, you've won 14 fights, you've had 11 knockouts, so there would probably be a level of narcissism there. First and foremost, I don't think that that message was about me. It's just about helping people. Do you know what I mean? Full stop. And then in terms of narcissistic traits, have I got some? I feel like every, everyone that's in a position where they're putting their pride on the line has to believe in themselves. Do you know what I mean? So right. I, definitely, I definitely believe I have to believe I'm this shit. I've said it earlier. Do you know what I mean? You're literally putting your pride on the line. So with boxing, with saying I'm going to make music, I know that there's a potential for criticism under that. I feel that like before people, some people will listen to it, it's already a no. Do you know what I mean? But I still put stuff out because I believe in myself at all times. I feel like you got through that nicely. Was that, was that the bit that you was dreading? Uh, me ask, about me asking you about your, uh, your past relationships? Feel good. Do you think there is a problem in the, in the sports world and music world when it does come to black men dating black women, especially darker skinned women? Do you think it's not a desirable thing? Because right. I know you openly talk about black women. You seem to like darker skinned women. Like again, when they put you up on Shade Bar, like all the girls were really happy that the girl that they you was away with was dark skinned, and they was just like, "This is really nice to see." Do you think that there is an issue within these worlds where black men seem to not want to be with darker skinned women? Um, I don't personally, obviously, experience it. Obviously, I know what my type is, but I feel like everyone's got their own preference. I do feel like 
in some cases, don't go too, too much into it because I don't know everyone else's um, thoughts. But for me, I feel like whether we like it or not, there's like, like in society, there's a lot of colorism. So in terms of like, I know before I started be becoming a more well-known boxer, mm. it would be hard to get into nightclubs and stuff like that. So I feel like you get into them and you've got more money, you can get a table, mm. they know you at the door, etc. So when you get into these places, which is where if you're busy all the time, you might only meet girls out where you're getting coming from, you might only meet girls at certain events. And if the only girls that keep getting in are lighter skinned or whatever else, that's who you end up interacting with on a more, um, more regular basis, the more money you get, which is it's unfortunate, but I think that that does happen. Obviously, I am out here, do you get in coming from? You'll see me in Shoreditch, you'll see me out and about, so yeah, I, I mean, I'm in the bashment here, raves, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? You know. Yeah. Uh, about two years ago, after your breakup, you seemed to, you was like the self-proclaimed king of hot boy summer. Absolutely not self-proclaimed. They gave it to me. I saw they it on your, I didn't want I it, saw. they gave it to me. Okay. I did not want and it. And you was literally like living your best life. Yeah. So in growing up, you got you. It's well known fact that you got bullied yeah. uh, because of your weight and etc. <laughs> What's funny? <laughs> what are you laughing uh, for? You read a bit on uh, Google. I'll give it to you. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, no, Lawrence. You say it like right. more or less quite right. like got most it. interviews. So you got bullied because yeah. you because you were overweight. Is that why you got into sports? Yes, it is actually. Okay, right. Mm. And you feel that like it helped with your confidence. Hundred percent. 100%, like obviously I was bullied, a bit overweight and you know, couldn't get no girls and stuff. So it was nice to start losing weight, finally see six packs for the first time. And it helped with my interaction skills with people. Like I never really used to go out and chat, but when you go to boxing clubs, you interact with people of all different ages and races, so it was good. I obviously, we're, we're cool with each other. You actually think you're quite a funny person. Thank you, I but think the same with you. I, love, I am quite funny, aren't I? Like that one. <laughs> so dumb. I'm quite funny. But do you think that people don't, do you think you're a bit misconstrued? I'm on the blog sites and I watch, I see the comments. Every time people, they post you, they, there's like a, there's like a, you know, some girls are like good looking. Some girls Ooh. think you're corny. Some girls think like you're still doing all of this to get over Miss Banks. I think that was my question about the identity crisis. Do you mm. feel like, you suffer from like ugly duck syndrome. First and foremost, I don't suffer from anything. <laughs> That's first and foremost. Um, but yeah. On a, on a, on a, but like, a, as in like growing up, yeah. no one wanted you. Mm -hmm. And now you're six five, you know, look handsome, coming, you know, yeah, yeah, nice yeah. smile, funny, right. you know, or, you, do you know what I mean? You seem to have really big feet, like so. <laughs> <laughs> So, do you feel like... She's got a container for guys. Come on, that's your... That's your girl. What do you funny? think... Do you think that you're, you like, you're just enjoying the experience of people finding you good looking now? Thank you, first of all, boss, for the confidence, you know what I mean? It really boosts my confidence even more. Um, but yeah, no, at the end of the day, I feel like... I don't suffer from anything, that's first and foremost, yeah. <laughs> okay. And secondly, I just feel like I'm just enjoying my life as it comes right now, do you know what I mean? So I don't think it's anything to do with my past. Like, I got over it, I got over the bullying. It's years ago now. I'm happy with who I am and what I'm becoming, so I'm good. So your next fight is yeah. for world champion. Yes, yes. And what do you think is going to change once you're world champion? Everything. Are you going to get more pussy? 100%. Really? Mm -hmm. How many threesomes are you going to have? That's an interesting question. We're going to have to wait and see. In your ideal world, what does world champion look like for Lawrence Acoli? Um, Just more money in the bank, more pride in my family, more pride in myself. The community that I come from in Hackney, just having another positive role model to look at. Look at. All those kids that don't want to, that want to live a lit life, but want to do it legit, can look and say, you know what, he did it. He's working at McDonald's. He grinded at McDonald's to get his first car at 18 and carried on that same trajectory. Went to uni, got good grades, but decides to become a boxer and here he is so in whatever field they're in they can push it and then you're, probably like, you're actually quite a good boy right i like to think so it depends on what you're talking about though but yeah oh yeah because in the rap songs you talk about what you How like do to do you know all this stuff because i've heard the pre because okay. because i've heard the stuff that's on your page go on then. so what do you hear no you said stuff about what you like to do to girls and stuff like that like what i can't remember lawrence but it was in there somewhere mm -hmm. 
I think you're cool peoples. I think you are a little bit misunderstood. Do you know what? I think you're misunderstood as well. Do you know what I mean? I've sat here across the table from you. Before I came here, I was told by everybody, don't go on her show, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that that's wrong. I think that, you know what? Sitting across the table from you, you're actually quite a cool, sweet person. And we've got to give you more credit. Do you know what I mean? You're bringing a lot of awareness. You're bringing a lot of uh, attention to the, to the scene, as it were. So keep up the good work. Don't ever let no one get you down, okay? I won't. I won't allow anyone to do that. You as well. Thank you. you even all the people that say bad stuff about you. Do people comments. say bad stuff about me? I mean, in the comments, they say stuff like... You know, Where? What comments, though? Like, UK Gossip, Shade Borough. Do you know what it is with me, with those pages and stuff? Like, I understand this place and I have massive respect for them, do you know what I mean? But ultimately, in my actual life, it doesn't have much bearing. Like, as in, you can talk about anything that's popped up on UK Gossip, but... The people that tune in and pay for my stuff don't know nothing about those pages. Well, that, but that's what, that's what I was saying earlier. You're kind of like, you're in the scene, but you're quite detached mm, no, from the scene. Do you, you know get what is, I mean? I might be known in the scene, but I don't need the scene as such. Do you get what I'm coming from? So I don't, I, I don't need gossip pages to like me, to make money. Do you get what I'm coming from? So if you could do one rap collaboration, who would it be with? <sighs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, I'm not going to go with that one. No, who would no, no, no. you going to say? I was going to joke and say someone, but I'm going to go with probably right now DBE, I mean, Dutch, like or Big Tobes. Really? Okay. Yeah. Big, Tobes, Big Tobes came on my show. Oh, yeah. How was, was that? He was, yeah, it was a really good interview. I we'll thought he was going to say um, Young Ads because you no, said. No, I said DBE. Oh, is that them? That, yeah. Oh, right. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Because you seem to really like that one, don't I'm you? I'm a massive fan of them. Do you know what I mean? I'm, like, as I said, as a boxer, I'm a fan of artists, do you know what I mean? I might see them and they might know that I'm a boxer, but personally, I listen to their stuff fan way, do you know what I mean? I'll go to their shows as a fan and so on and so forth. Have you got any questions for me? Plenty. Um, oh, do wow. you eat pussy? Do I eat pussy? Yeah. Time to time, depending on how I feel. What about you? I didn't ask you that. Do you eat pussy? It depends. Have you let a couple of girls sit on your face before? It depends. Depends on what? How you feel? How I feel, yeah. When was the last time? You let someone suffocate you. Not during lockdown. Really? That's not what I heard. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, guys, have you had fun? I have. You know, this wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It, I'm a I'm proper easy girl. Easy to talk to. It is what it is. So what, you don't know when your next fight is? I know when it is. Oh, you I don't, but you haven't it, yeah. said. And who are you fighting? A guy called Glowacki, a Polish guy. This is the thing. Why do boxers always just fight people that no one really knows? It depends. Obviously, there's world champions, so it's worldwide. People in his country know who he is. People in Boston know who he is. But is he maybe is he supposed to be really good? He is good. He's very very good. But I, I believe I'll get the victory. You win your fights quite early on as well, don't you? It depends. I thought we were wrapping up, but no, I hear you still. Like, You're gonna cut it, so it doesn't look like we wrapped <laughs> up and I'm no, wrapped up. No, not necessarily. I do this all the time. You obviously right, don't yeah. watch my show that much, so you should know that. I've watched just all go. of your episodes. Do you oh, know what I mean? I'm a you? massive fan of you as well. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, thank you. Do you know which one I enjoyed the most? So um, talk to me. I want to say Kyle Day. Yeah. Is it Kyle Day? Yeah, because uh, I wore this exact same jumper for that one. Interesting. And I thought I'd wear it for you. Why? I really enjoyed that interview, so I was hoping that I was going to enjoy this Did interview. Did you enjoy this interview? I enjoy you, Lawrence. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy you. I think you're cool people. I enjoy you too, and Thank I think you. you're cool people. Uh, this is getting really awkward now. Okay, let's end it then. Yeah, I think we should. <laughs> Guys, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your dad. We have Lawrence Coley, it's been good. We out. <laughs>